Hello again, boys and girls. It's Mr. Wasman, and once again, we find ourselves adding fractions together. But this time, we will be adding fractions with unlike denominators, tenths and hundredths. We are in our math journal, volume 2, on page 164, unit 5, lesson 5, adding tenths and hundredths. Now, I'm going to start with problem number 3, because that's in numeric form instead of word form, because it's going to be easier to uh, demonstrate what I'm talking about. Okay? 8 hundredths plus 6 tenths. Now, whenever I add two fractions together, I always have to add fractions of a like denominator. Okay? And the easiest way to illustrate that would be 1 half plus two-fourths. Now, one-half and two-fourths have different denominators, as you can see. They have different numbers on the bottom of the fraction. I can't add those together. Uh, what some students will foolishly do is give you an answer of three-sixths. One plus two is three. Two plus four is six. Well, you can't do that. That does not work, because I'm not adding the fractions correctly. I have to think about the fractions in terms of like denominators. So how do I make like denominators? Well, I have to convert one fraction to the other denominator. And the easiest way to do that is to convert halves into fourths. So if I have one half, okay, like so, the easiest way to make it into fourths is just to multiply both the top and the bottom number by two. So I'm literally just cutting each of my halves in half again, like this. Now one half becomes two fourths. By simply cutting each half in half, or doubling the number of parts, I now have two fourths. Okay. So 1 times 2 gives me 2, 2 times 2 gives me 4, and my fraction becomes 2 fourths. So my new problem is actually 2 fourths plus 2 fourths is going to give me a total of 4 fourths. All I had to do is I had to convert my denominators into like denominators. So that usually means one of the two fractions needs to be changed. Now with tenths and hundredths, it's pretty simple because in order to convert a tenth into a hundredth, all I have to do is multiply both the top number and bottom number times 10. So 6 times 10, 10 times 10. Okay? So 6 tenths is the same as saying 60 hundredths, or 6 with an extra 0 over 10 with an extra 0. Now, when I'm converting from tenths to hundredths, I really just have to think about adding an extra 0, because by adding an extra 0, that's the same uh, as just multiplying it by 10. Okay, But let's finish with the computations here. So I'm adding 8 hundredths plus 60 hundredths. Okay, So I'm going to rewrite this as 8 hundredths plus 60 hundredths equals 68 hundredths. Now that I was able to do in my head, but vertically I would line those problems up like this. Give me my numerator like that, but it's 68 hundredths. Okay? Now let's try another one. Let's look at number 4, 42 hundredths plus 9 tenths. Now again, I have to convert one denominator to the other, and the easiest way to do that is to find a, uh, a, a like factor or a multiple that allows me to do that. So again, tenths can be converted to hundredths by just adding a zero at the bottom and at the top. So 9 tenths is the same as saying 90 hundredths. An easy way to think about this is in terms of money. Okay, If I'm changing dimes to pennies, I would trade 9 dimes for 90 pennies because they're worth the same amount. So 9 tenths becomes 90 hundredths. 
So I would write that down. 90 hundredths plus 42 hundredths. And yes, I reversed the order of the add-ins, but that's okay because the order of the add-ins does not change the sum. So usually I find it useful to start with the larger number first. And even though they're both smaller than 1, 90 hundredths is bigger than 42. So I'm going to think about my numerators. 90 plus 42 and my total becomes 132. So my total is 132 hundredths. Now, using that analogy of money, if I have 132 pennies, another way that I can think about that is $1.32, or $1.32 hundredths. The first was an improper fraction where the top number is bigger than the bottom, meaning that there's more parts than there are total spaces to hold for one whole. And the second is a mixed number, which represents whole amounts and fractional amounts. Let's try one more. Let's take a look at number seven, one and two tenths plus six and 35 hundredths. Now again, if I'm thinking of money, I can think of this as dollars and cents. So if I have one dollar and two dimes, that's the same as saying a dollar twenty. And if I have six dollars and thirty-five pennies, that's like saying six dollars and thirty-five cents. So all I'm doing is adding my fractional parts first and then my whole number parts. So let's add them. Gives me seven dollars and fifty-five cents, right? So if I think about this fractionally, I'm going to add 6 and 35 hundredths plus 1 and 2 tenths, also known as 20 hundredths. Now 20 plus 35 is going to give me 55 hundredths. And then 6 plus 1, of course, is 7. 7 and 55 hundredths. Now, again, if you didn't do that off the top of your head, you would want to line up your, uh, line up your numbers vertically. 6 and 35 hundredths plus 1 and 20 hundredths. And again, when I'm adding two fractions together, I just have to pay attention to the numerator. Okay, the numerator is what I'm adding when the denominators are the same. So 35 plus 20 gives me 55, 55 hundredths, and then 6 plus 1 is 7. And that's all there is to it, friends. You just got to be paying attention to the fact that you are now dealing with two fractions or in the case of number seven, two mixed numbers that have fractional parts with different denominators. All you have to do before you can add the fractions together is to convert one of the fractions to the other denominator. So you have to find like denominators. And we do that by picking multiples or finding a common factor that we can multiply the other denominator by to convert. Okay? This will all feel like second nature after some practice. So please try the rest of these problems on your own. If you get stuck, well, you know what to do. You need to talk to your math teacher. They will be happy to help you if you have questions. But they won't know if you have questions unless you ask them. Okay? Until next time, friends, good luck and have a good day. Thanks.